the shores of a man-made lake in a suburban business park is an unlikely place for an incredibly busy restaurant. But come with us to see why it's so popular in this episode of Dining Down Under. Another episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikov. I'm Mark McCluskey. Benjamin Christie. And we're cooking recipes today from Albert's Lakeside Restaurant in Balkham Hills. It's in an outer suburb of Sydney. And it's, it, it's interesting. There's an American commentator who once said, nobody goes there anymore, the place is too crowded. And that's probably <laughs> true of Albert's rest restaurant. And interestingly, Mark is the executive chef of Albert's. I am Vic. I think it has something to do with the native herbs and spices that are being used there. And it's pulling people in? It sure is, mate. Excellent, excellent. It's right next to a man-made lake. Great place to eat. And uh, so some of our dishes today are, gonna, are really inspired by Mark's cooking, Mark's application of native Australian flavours. Interpretation, flavors. yes. So what are you cooking today? Well, today what I thought I would do is I'm cooking a bit of kangaroo. I really enjoy kangaroo. Kangaroo is one of those meats. Uh, it's 98% fat free. It's cholesterol free. It's an excellent meat. Uh, we're going to be using also some pine mushrooms. With the pine mushrooms, we're going to crust them with ricotta and spinach and add a bit of uh, red desert dust, Vic. Which we can talk about a little bit later. We sure in terms will. Of ingredients. I mean, the interesting thing to me about kangaroo is it's, it's healthy in two ways it's healthy to eat and it's healthy to the country in terms of the way it's produced. It's healthy for the environment to manage our species. Benjamin, what are you doing? I'm doing a three cheese frittata, a fritters, sorry. Uh, we're using farmhouse cheeses, yep. which, or, which are already infused with native, native spices. We have uh, akadra, uh, peppermint, and wild thyme already in the cheeses. So these are interesting. They're cheddar cheeses. They're actually made as part of a university project that's now running a, um, a whole dairy farm producing these cheeses for the market. And they're in supermarkets uh, throughout Australia. We uh, finish also with a dessert. I'm doing a, um, a chocolate seed mousse. Uh, quite an easy dish in a, uh, in a tart case, served with a couple of interesting native flavoured ice creams. So have a look at Albert's Lakeside Restaurant and enjoy this. The location of Albert's Lakeside Restaurant breaks all the business success rules of location, location, location. You'll have to search for it, tucked away behind a shopping centre in the suburbs, about 40 minutes from the heart of Sydney. But people travel from far and wide and specifically come here to try Mark's innovative cooking using native Australian ingredients. One of Australia's healthy meats is kangaroo. Low fat, high protein and rich in iron and B vitamins, but also healthy for the land as a part of responsible resource management but I'll get off my soapbox. Mark's come up with a delicious sauce for this dish. It's made with soy, verjuice, mirin, pepperberry and a few other Australian herbs. He calls it Aussie or an Australian teriyaki. The secret to cooking low fat game meats is to sear well cook to rare or medium rare, and leave the meat to rest for as long as it takes to cook. Another secret is never to cook it more than medium. Every dish needs what I call textural crunch, and the chopped macadamia nuts give this to the mixed greens. The blanched snow peas, broccolini and Chinese bok choy get coated with the nuts and the pan juices. Thank you. 
Slicing the rested kangaroo fillet at an angle helps with the presentation, but more importantly, contributes to the tenderness as each forkful is again cut across the grain. The finished dish has height, colour, textures and a wide range of balanced flavours. Mmm mmm, great eating. The dessert Mark made was a lesson in protein chemistry. Cooking eggs and milk into wild lime tart relies on unravelling the normal bundled protein strands and having them link up as a network of elongated strands holding pockets of liquid. You heat the egg mixture slowly up to 60 to 63 degrees C, that's 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It starts to thicken. Too much stirring and the added sugar both inhibit thickening, although the acid from the lime juice helps the custard form. Right then, we'll start off with the pine mushrooms by removing the stalk. Let's take the top off there. You can leave the stalk on if you want, but I prefer to take it off. It gives more room for the uh, ricotta mixture. So we'll take the stalks off, put them over there. And with the ricotta mixture, we're going to have three components to that. The first one being ricotta, funny that. There we go, we'll tip that into the bowl. The second component being red desert dust. It's got a few uh, spicy notes, a bit of paprika, lemon aspen and a few other notes there. We'll also tear a little bit of the spinach. A lot of people do blanch the spinach. I don't think you need to. Just leave it in there and we'll mix that around. There we go. I'll get into that in a minute and, and put it into the mushrooms. I'd also like to talk about crusting the kangaroo. That's what gives it its really unique flavour. With the kangaroo, I like to use alpine pepper. We've talked a couple of times about this. Native pepper berries, native pepper leaf. So we'll just sprinkle that on. A pinch of ginger, or a squeeze of ginger, as I like to say. A little bit on there. There we go. And we rub that round. And a little bit later, we'll be cooking all this. Benjamin, what are you doing, mate? I'm just finishing uh, cutting the beetroot up, which is going to be part of my jam. I might start that off now. I'm going to put... Uh, some balsamic vinegar in the pan and some yeah. white balsamic vinegar as well. Oh yeah, combination. Bit of a combo. I'm also going to put some sugar in there. I'm going to bring it to heat and start caramelising it. Caramel caramelising it. And then uh, add the beetroot in a bit later. Once that's going, I'm also going to be cutting the cheeses up, the farmhouse cheeses, and putting those into the uh, fritters. Leave this the wax coating, it uh, tends to stick in your teeth. It's terrible stuff. It's terrible. So this is the Akudra cheese? This is the Akudra one. Yep. And we've got two others as well. We're using a thyme and we're using a ma mountain pepper as well. So we'll put those in a bit later. While I'm doing that, I'll also put the corn in and poach those. I've got um, eggs and um, sugar simply dissolving the sugar and whisking with the egg yolks only. This is a very simple dessert. And all I need to do from there is add my cream, fold that through and then add whipped egg whites and flavour and it's all done. Benjamin? Now the beetroot, or often known as beets, they can be a bit messy in the kitchen too. So you've got to be careful you don't uh... Use other things while you're using your knife, otherwise it stains other things. Really good with white clothes. Very, very good. So we're just chopping these up now. But it's interesting, a lot of people actually don't eat beetroot, or even in Australia, a hamburger is not a hamburger unless there's beetroot yeah, on it. Beetroot's in And yet people still say, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. But possibly it's the tin variety of beetroot, and admittedly, that's um, 
I think it tastes totally different. I think it tastes totally different. And the texture's not there either. Here you've there. got a nice soft texture. Cooking it down in balsamic, it's going to go to a literally a jam. So you're working the sugars out of the beetroot. And the acidity of the basil of the balsamic balances it balances out. Balances it out. So that's not too far away. And we'll start putting the cheeses into the bowl. And a bit of flour. Milk. While you're mixing that, Ben, I'll just uh, flavour up my mousse, if I may, because uh, you're just adding eggs and flour there. <laughs> um, to this mousse, you could add chocolate and actually melt the chocolate in the microwave, throw it in and flavour the base of the mousse. I'm actually using wattle seed. I'll just put down there, we've mentioned wattle seed before, it's an acacia seed. Uh, it's been roasted to bring out the coffee chocolate hazelnut nuttiness. Now that also comes as a liquid product and uh, all I need to do is literally splash in a small amount and colour my ultimate mousse a, uh, a coffee brown colour. That's got a great colour there, great texture. All that needs now is my whipped egg white to finish it. Back to you, Ben. Well, I've got the cheeses in there already, but I'm going to enhance them with a bit of lemon, lemon thyme. Uh, lemon myrtle, yep. Lemon myrtle, sorry. Yep. So this is interesting because what you're relying on here is the fat of the, uh, in the fritter itself in the cheese, taking on a little bit of the lemon myrtle flavour as well. Exactly. Mixing those together now. And a little bit of the thyme mix as well yeah, on top. Just get me a little okay. bit more. Milk out of the fridge. In the fridge. Coming on nicely there, Ben. Benjamin. Thank you. So you're going to cook that off, are you? Make yeah. make a, a batter like, or a pancake? Like a pancake. And I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm going to add add the the corn in there as well to give it a bit of textural crunch. Excellent. <laughs> So we've crusted the kangaroo. What I like to do before I put the kangaroo on the grill is grill the, give the grill a bit of a brush. There we go. And we get the kangaroo on there. You don't need any oil with the kangaroo. There's enough heat there. I'll whack that on. Now with kangaroo, it's very important to cook it rare to medium. About, takes about 10, eight to 10 minutes on a, on a medium heat. You don't want to cook it too much. It becomes very tough. So we'll do that. Also, we've got the pine mushrooms that uh, I've put all the filling into. With the pine mushrooms, we're going to put them on the back of the grill and we're going to close it and create the convection oven. There we go. And while that's happening, I've got my prosciutto. Now with the prosciutto, what I've done is I've just brushed it with some um, brown sugar. With the brown sugar, it's going to help to sweeten that and we're going to pan fry it so it crisps up. Gives a really nice crunchy texture. So there we go. We'll put that into the pan. Turn that up a bit. Where was my sizzle? <laughs> there we go. So I'll give that a couple more minutes. Benjamin, what are you doing back there, mate? Mate, I'm just finishing off the uh, beetroot jam. Just cut the corn for the fritter. And I'm going to start making the fritters. So put those in. Bit of a mix. And this is a, I suppose, a vegetarian dish, Vic. But yep, not, would not, be. It's not dairy free though. That's so, okay, still vegetarian. Still vegetarian. You... Yep. So I'll bring these over now. And we'll start putting these on. Not too big. A bit bigger, about, I suppose, what you could bite size. Yep, yep. So you could do this as either a, a large pancake, which is where the frittata comes from, or More as a fritter. More fritter sizes. Which is a rough pancake. Very, very rough. Rustic sort of looking. Not too rough, I hope, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as, it get, as the uh, frittata starts to cook, the cheese starts to melt inside as well. So it'd be nice and creamy. Also releasing those native flavours as well.
And how's your jam coming along? It seems to be caramelising and the beetroot's breaking down. Sure is. It's looking good. Reduce the heat a little bit, don't want it to burn. Don't want to lose your spoon either. Or spoon. <laughs> so it's all going. While uh, Ben's doing that, I can work to the next stage of my tarts, which is where I've already folded in the egg white to the uh, mousse mix. And literally, it's just a matter of filling the tarts, as many as I need. It's already been flavoured. And then setting it in the chiller or in the fridge. And I also will be garnishing this up with some um, ice cream. So I just want to have a quick word about a number of ice cream mixes as well. You can make an, uh, an anglaise base, a custard, um, literally just a custard, eggs, milk, um, maybe even a little bit of butter just to enrich it, alcohol if you want, uh, and then churn that with, uh, with cream as well. But I've actually chosen today to use a powdered ice cream mix. And these instant mixes are becoming quite popular, particularly when you start enhancing them with um, interesting uh, ingredients like this one particularly has a lactobacillus, which is the uh, microorganisms that you get in yogurt. So for good gut health, the lactobacillus is a really uh, important inclusion in your diet. So this is an ice cream with this yogurt bacteria, the good bacteria base. And that simply gets whisked with water to that stage there, and um, so I'll you be. Don't need an ice cream machine to well, make the whole thing. Well, once this is whisked, you can actually just put it in the ice cream uh, in the freezer, and it'll make an ice cream. But you can, it, unless you freeze it slowly or take it out a couple of times and whisk it a couple of times as it's freezing, you will get a slightly granular texture. So what I'm going to do is introduce a, uh, just introduce it into an ice cream machine. I'm going to move to the far end when, where we have our PowerPoint and uh, finish off this ice cream by churning it in an ice cream machine. So Ben, over to you, mate. Starting to turn the uh, fritters. And I want a real golden colour of them on the other side. And they're also expanding as well. What are you up to, Mark? Well, what I'm doing is just taking the caramelisation of the prosciutto out, smelling the beautiful flavours there. I love prosciutto. Really good stuff. There we go. Take how, that out. How do they make it? Prosciutto, I believe it's sugar and salt cured. Um, it's, most people call it parmahan, especially throughout Europe, but uh, in Australia it's referred to as prosciutto. Hmm, interesting stuff. Well, that's an ice cream churner, is it? I've, uh... Yeah, this is an old fashioned style from, uh, okay. from home, actually. <laughs> Had it for years. Great. And uh, it's literally just an ice cr a, a frozen ice cream block down the bottom of plastic. Good stuff thermal mass that's, that you put in the freezer, the whole unit goes into the freezer and uh, as the churn goes around it scrapes the ice cream that uh, freezes on the bottom. So uh, just to summarise what we have today from Albert's Lakeside Restaurant including kangaroo with the pine mushrooms with spinach and ricotta, ginger on the kangaroo of course, Three cheese fritters with beetroot jam and the chocolate mousse tart with wild ice cream and forestberry scented strawberries. So time to plate up and uh, we've already got a guest for dinner. So uh, he's waiting out there. With this sort of food, mate, you can always expect someone over. <laughs> they come out of the woodwork, don't they? They do. <laughs> right then, so I'll start off over here with my pine mushrooms, placing those in the centre of the plate, topping it with a touch of the kangaroo. Nicely rested, perfectly cooked. What more would you expect? And why go. rest? Well, rest it. When you rest the meat, it actually tenderises the meat. Let's say a lot of the juices run out. If you don't rest your meat, it's going to be a little bit tough. We don't want that. So it's a redistribution of the juices. Oh, that's a good, good way of putting it, Vic. Is that a good way of putting it? And we, with the dressing, we've got some white balsamic we're going to drizzle around. That's been infused with aniseed myrtle, which is your Australian version of star anise. And then just one piece of prosciutto to finish. How are you going, Ben? Just finishing these fritters off with a beetroot jam. I'm just going to put a bit of rocket, a little bit of olive oil, just as a garnish on top. All right, fellas, our, uh, our guests are probably getting really hungry. I so I've just knocked together the uh, dessert here 
We've got ice cream as a, because uh, it was still semi soft out of the ice cream machine. Let's go. Ready to roll. My dessert's going to be ready about the time that uh, we get to the table. And we're off and racing. Enjoy. Looks beautiful, boys. So, I'll put a dessert there as well. While the boys are getting into the food, let's recap. The real secret to Mark's dish is the aniseed myrtle. Mark compared it to Chinese star anise, but I think it's much softer. You could simply add a dash of perno. The highlight of Ben's dish is undoubtedly the paperbark smoked beetroot and the balsamic jam. The paperbark smokiness is soft and delicate, brings out the sugary sweetness of the beetroot. To mimic the paperbark, you could try a softwood sawdust for smoking, but nothing too piney or resinous. All these recipes, as usual, on the website, as well as the recipes from Albert's Digging and uh, a whole host. So visit us regularly, come back, have a look, and enjoy the show and enjoy the food. Cheers. Aaron, are you lucky or what? We're not racing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's what we want. <laughs> Cheers. See you next time. Mm -hmm.